sadly, not every day ends up on four wheels on the ground. And if you are driving racetracks, the question is when it will happen, not if it will happen. And because the question is when, safety is very, very important. And in today's video, let's talk about different safety features around the car, inside of the car, what have made the driver to walk away from such a horrible accident just with the minor scratch on the hand. The car had hit the barrier on the front end very hard to the barriers and then started to roll a few times. Luckily, as I mentioned, the driver simply walked away without any major health issues. In the end of the video, also let's talk how to properly use the safety equipment like six-point belts and helmet. The first thing which hit the barrier was of course the front bumper of the car. And the front bumper is not so much of the safety feature, but it hides quite a few features behind it. So it has the aluminum uh, front bumper subframe, as well the front ends of the chassis rails are built from aluminum as well. And these parts during the accident crumbles and absorbs a lot of crash energy and reduces the hit on the driver. So even this car is built with all the safety FIA safety equipment inside like roll cage and six point belts and so on. It's still good to leave all these original safety features because it simply reduces the impact for the driver as well. And after the whole front of the car is already destroyed the hit comes to the front wheels and as you see the front wheel is already quite a collapsed wheel but it's not a safety feature here again everything hides behind it and in the f30 also in 90 and most modern cars the front suspension are built from aluminum it of course improves handling it's lightweight and overall it maybe lasts a bit longer than steel parts however it's also a safety thing so when you have a very big accident on the wheel it's tend that the arms would simply break and the wheel would go out of the car and wouldn't want to go inside of the car. So in F30, all arms are aluminum and also behind the wheel there here is a huge metal plate which also directs the wheel to move outside of the cars once the arms break. So this simply saves the driver legs. Also for the passenger is the same. And once the front of the car was simply crumbling, few things came in work in the car. Because this car is built under FIA regulations, it has no self-tensioning seatbelt, also doesn't have any airbag in the car. So the main main thing here came into the work was six-point harnesses. And these harnesses had to hold all the weight of the driver plus all the energy from the impact of the front. So these belts had to be mounted properly and safety as well the belts must be a high quality not to snap not to tear off the stitching not to uh, simply rip the ends of the metal parts next to the lock because if these belts would fail in any way if one of the mounts would snap or anything the consequences for the driver would be way way different so my tip for myself is for everyone never ever try to save any money for the seat belts or any other safety equipment because once you need it and if it fails then it doesn't matter anymore right because if, if in this case any of the mounts would snap the driver probably wouldn't walk away just with a simple scratch on the hand and after the front hit the car simply jumped back a little bit from the barriers and started to roll sideways and as you see the whole roof and the both pillars are quite bent and now the car is a little bit shaped like an oval. But the roof didn't collapse at all. And that's quite obviously because it has a FIA roll cage inside. Inside of the car you can see how the roll cage was staying strong in the car and didn't move at all. But the whole car was simply shaping itself around the roll cage. And it looks the same on both sides. So the driver's side is a little bit less bent, but also like the, this pillar is a little bit more inside and it's simply shaped around the roll cage here. On the passenger side, it's obviously was the first impact and the whole roof is simply completely, completely shaped nicely around the roll cage. So again, if not the roll cage, this pillar on that side probably took the biggest impact and would simply collapse more. As well, roll cage holds the shoulder seat belts. Because the roll cage is a very strong part of the car, it's a very good idea to put the shoulder straps here. 
And the last very important safety thing inside of the car is of course the seat itself. The thing is here, the seat belts mainly are working when you have the frontal impact or you're rolling and the seat belts of the waist doesn't allow to driver to move up and down. But for the impacts, if you are coming with the back end first or you're having the side impact or you're rolling and you have a lot of forces to the side, the seat absorbs all the energy then. And in this case, because the car was rolling, the seat had to work as well a lot. And what we can see, the seat mounts are completely bent and destroyed. The seat even hit the B pillar and made a small bend here, but nothing cracked, nothing breaked off, and the seat was simply maintaining the place. So all these things simply absorbed some energy, but didn't let go and kept the driver in the place safely. And for the end about talking about the safety equipment inside of the car, I want to give one more tip if you are building the car or you are owning some kind of track tool to think of. The battery inside of the car, usually like in BMWs, is mounted in the back of the car. And if you remove all the interior, like in this case, you have a direct passage from the battery to the driver and passenger. And if you are using still like original battery with the acid, it's very dangerous if you have the hit on the back or if you have the rollover but the acid will be simply spilled and you can be burned so in this case you should think of few things first of all of all mounting the battery safely second if you still intend to use the acid battery to cover it with the battery box so the acid couldn't be spilled away from the battery and mainly I would definitely suggest using non-spillage uh, batteries like the gel type or other type. You will also save some weight and you will be much safer. And all these safety features which we have just been talking about can be completely, completely useless if you don't use the six-point harness properly and as well you are not wearing a safety helmet. So let's now talk how to use the safety harness correctly. So first of all, of course, you need to adjust the sitting position so you can move front and back so the uh, the pedal distance and also the steering wheel would be in your comfortable position and then you can start doing tightening your seat belt so what you do always first you always start with the waist belt first so you grab it from the sides and it's very important that your waist belt would be in the same position as your pants belt and that the lock would also stay in the same position as your pants belt and it needs to be really tight and keep your waist really really firmly in the seat so it can barely barely move so you can tighten on these shroud belts on these ends very comfortably and the trick what i do i try to tighten them as much as i can and when i simply put these ends of the seat belt through the seat and then through the both sides through the seat and when i grab these ends and i simply pull these ends up so i move my body a little bit so it would find the uh, the most backwards position for my waist and i pull it a little bit more and my seat belt is in the same belt uh, in the same position as my jeans belt the lock is also in the same position and I can barely move my body down there. After the waist belt is fully, fully secured and tightened, you put two bottom belts in the lock from the bottom and you can pull on the front of the seat belts to make it a little bit tighter. You don't really need to tighten these bottom belts as much as your waist belt. It simply must be not loose and cannot allow the lock to move up. So the lock always will stay where your jeans belt lock is staying. And then the last, last step, what you do, just then after the complete bottom belts, all four points are tightened, just then you grab the both shoulder belts, you put in the top of the lock, and just then you tighten it up. So as I mentioned before, first, you always tighten the waist belt first, then you tighten a little bit the bottom belt since, and just the last step is both shoulders. And usually while you start driving the track, if the waist belt is tightened properly, 
you will feel that the shoulder straps will get a little bit loose because your body will find a better position. So while you're driving in the first laps, you simply tighten the shoulders a little bit more and you are driving safely. And the last safety thing is of course, helmet. And the helmet must be on your head and it needs to bu be buckled up. And it needs to be as tight that only one finger would fit behind your chin. It still needs to be comfortable. And maybe some people will say that, oh, during tourist drives, it's not mandatory to wear a helmet or it will ruin your beautiful haircut or it's simply not comfortable. Well, I will be honest. Crashing without a helmet in the track will probably ruin your life. So it's your call this time. Thank you for watching and stay safe.